All right, welcome to episode four from our series in chapter 11. And in the last episode, we learned about meiosis and how it is a form of reduction divisions. You're going from a diploid organism to a haploid organism. And you do this by replicating your DNA once and dividing twice. But we're going to revisit meiosis here because we're going to talk about a process called gametogenesis. All right? Now, the word gametogenesis is essentially telling you what's going on. Gameto, that refers to gametes. Now, if you don't remember what a gamete is, that's a reproductive cell or a sex cell. I'm going to write down sex cell because it's, la it's uh, less letters. Genesis pretty much means to make. Okay, so think of like the book of Genesis in the Bible, and that's when God created the world and all that stuff. And so if you put it right here together, gamete is a gamete. Genesis means to make. This is a process that makes gametes. So you're creating gametes. Now, gametes come in two flavors. You have a sperm cell, which is the male gamete. So this is the reproductive cell made by, by men. Let me just get rid of gamete there. And then you have the egg, celled, egg cell or ova, which is the female gamete. And that one's going to be produced by women. Okay. Now, in humans, both of these guys are going to be haploid. And in humans, the haploid number is 23. So when a sperm cell joins with an egg cell, you have 23 plus 23, 23 plus 23, 46. And so all other cells in your body are going to be diploid, and they're going to have 46 chromosome, 23 from mom, 23 from dad. Okay, uh, this should say kinds, by the way. It's kind of funny, all right? Spermatogenesis is going to make sperm cells. Now, this is basically regular old meiosis, okay? Except your daughter's cells are going to be sperm cells. So nothing really different happens in this one. It's just exactly what you learned in the last episode. But when it comes to oogenesis, they're pronounced o -a. It's not oo, it's o -a. In oogenesis, when you're making uh, egg cells, you're only going to get one of them that's good. So one that's viable. Viable means that it can live. And you're going to get three things that do not survive, and they're called polar bodies. Now, the reason you're doing this is right here. You're conserving your cytoplasm because the sperm cell doesn't contribute any kind of cytoplasm or any, any real organisms. A sperm cell is essentially a nucleus on a stick, and that stick just wiggles and swims to where it needs to go. Now, we had a previous episode. We had a picture that kind of looked like this. And this would be your egg cell. <clears throat> Let's pick a different color here. Let's go with that. And then you had your tiny little sperm cells. Okay? Notice the sperm cell is just a nucleus on a stick. And yeah, one more there. All right? So the blue are sperm cells and the red are the egg cell. It's the egg cell that has to give you endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, uh, Golgi bodies, etc. So we need to make sure that when we do our divisions, we're making them uneven so that one big cell that's available is the actual egg cell that you, you can use. All right, uh, I got a picture on the next screen here that shows you better what I'm talking about. <clears throat> okay, on this side is spermatogenesis. And you're going to start with your mother cell. And this it's called a spermatogonium. And it's going to go through DNA replication. And remember, our basically in this one, our, our haploid number, let's do this again. Let's go with that one. Here we've got 2n equals 4, and we go through DNA replication and some crossing over. So here we've got meiosis number 1, and then we have meiosis number 2, and in these guys right down here, n equals 2. So if you had 4 up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you have half of them here. Now you're always going to get one of your maternal and one of your paternal chromosomes in these. And then eventually they develop into sperm cells with the little tails, the little flagella. Okay. Over here with oogenesis, you notice that it's not going to be even. So once again, 2n equals 4. And down here, n is going to equal 2. And you can see right away in meiosis number one, our cytokinesis is not even. We're starting to put all of our eggs in one basket, so to speak. All right. So this would be your first polar body. This one will eventually be discarded. And then when we go down here to meiosis number two, we're still doing our division uneven. 
And so here's our one, two, three polar bodies. So we have three polar bodies. And these guys will be discarded. Basically means they'll be broken down and they'll be absorbed by the body. And here is your one viable. And remember, viable means it's actually going to be used, it's going to be able to live. Viable ovum or egg cell. Okay? And so this is one of the reasons why females can't reproduce forever because they're not making an unlimited amount of egg cells. They're only getting one per four, where uh, males can typically just keep churning out these sperm cells pretty much forever. But in females, we're putting kind of all of our eggs into one basket. Okay? So remember on this side, this is spermato. Genesis, process of meiosis that makes sperm cells. And over here we have OA genesis, a process of meiosis that produces egg cells. Okay, keeping this keeping keeping it nice and short on this one. So until our next episode, we're gonna see you on the flip side.